Yeah. Hello, welcome to this pres presentation about um, scraping your HTML website to Joomla. My name is Peter Martin. I will put this presentation on the, on, uh, online. And all the, the links are uh, blue. Uh, not really. Can you see the links? That, can you read what's, what it says here over here? Mm. Or should, should I? Curtains down. No, it doesn't work like that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> so um, this presentation is about um, scraping. And uh, my name is Peter Martin. Uh, uh, this is my Twitter handle, pd 7 dr Sorry. <laughs> So, uh, I used to say that I live in Nijmegen, I still do, but we just moved houses from here to, to there. And I have my own company, it's called DB8. I do support for Joomla site for customers and also custom development. I do that since 2005. And I have to tell you this presentation about scraping uh, was about a need I, I had where, for customers. So. Uh, since 2000, something else, since, since 2005, I'm installing websites and I, every time I configure options in websites, I don't want to show the author, the, the date, etc. So I always switch everything up, but I have to hide everything under the options. And I was doing it for 11 years and I thought that it should be easier, especially uh, sometimes I get new customers with hacked websites and you just create a new site and you have to configure the new site exactly like the other one. So I created uh, something called Options Manager. It's my first commercial extension, and uh, you can export. Oh, you can't see it. It's on the uh, on the on bottom. But you can export options of in websites. Besides that, I'm a Joomla volunteer, and also I do stuff with Linux. And it should say Open Coffee, but I think I should do something with with the screen. <coughs> Otherwise, I might not. I just try. So this presentation is about scraping about doing manually, automated, and I will show you some tools and I will end with a demo. First of all, what is scraping? Well, if you see it like this, it's just a kitchen tools, which you can use to scrape, but with websites, you're scraping data. And the data you can use, um, for instance, people scrape data to reuse content from other websites. Um, you have all those spam bots that scrape data. They scrape data and harvest email addresses. You also have hack bots that scrape uh, data to analyze. And Google scrapes also for uh, search engines they scrape. Uh, sometimes for price monitoring it's necessary to scrape sites. And I sometimes scrape sites when uh, they are missing an API and I want to have information of it. And I sometimes have to migrate content and then I scrape it too. So um, I was always interested in scraping, but in 2009 I bought this book. It's called Webbots, Spiders and Screen Scrapers. It was a really nice book uh, because it introduced me to um, what you could scrape, how you could scrape, and they even have techniques about how to scrape pop email. So it's not only uh, if it's text, you can scrape it on all kinds of services. There is only one thing with this book. It says with PHP C URL. Well, they are using PHP C URL, but they are using, the, using their own libraries and uh, it's not GPL. So I'm not really sure how I, you can use it. So I, it's nice to read, but I don't use the, 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 the libraries in it. Um, in 2011, I uh, was subscribed to a service called uh, a daily deal. And every day you would receive a new deal in your email box. And if you go to the website uh, with the deal, you could see uh, <coughs> the deal itself, uh, how much discount you would get, and also some commands. Because if you uh, look at it, uh, people could ask questions below uh, the deal. And they also could say things like, nice, I bought two, or uh, I bought it last time, they're really good. You should buy it, something like that. And I found it a bit suspicious because this is a sort of psychological technique 
you can use to uh, try people into buying because other, other people buy so I, I should not buy it and I was thinking that this website was doing the same so what I did oh yeah something else after 24 hours uh, the deal was archived and they created a new deal and the archive deal did not display any comments anymore so you didn't know if the people who responded today would do the same in a couple of days so I created a script a PHP scraper I used a Chrome tab to trigger the scraper and I added all the content to uh, MySQL database and after a couple of months I looked at the data and some of the users claimed to order about 2000 uh, euros a month so they were using this technique um, in 2013 I was experimenting with bitcoins I uh, bought this machine I had my Raspberry Pi of course I like Raspberry Pi and I um, was playing with it trying to generate bitcoins to, to mine the, the bitcoin uh, uh, things and if you're doing this stuff you have to you, you are interested in the worth of it so I how do you keep track of those exchange wages well of course scraping so I created a scraper um, it would uh, trigger a cross up every hour and it would uh, add the content to my MySQL database and send me an email notification so I was able to see the prices only it was not a real big success this, this machine because when I bought it it was maybe about generating four and a half euros a day and in the end a year later 22 cents euro cents a day <laughs> and I have to tell you that the electric street price in Holland is higher so I just I disconnected it um, so back to the daily deals I was I, I knew that the daily deals site was uh, a bit of a yeah not really good so but I was I'm still interested in, in, in uh, discounts everybody likes discounts don't we who doesn't like discounts yeah. you don't like discounts? discounts oh yeah you like okay so everybody likes discounts me too but I don't want to do a lot uh, of um, efforts for it I just want to get discount when I have need something so uh, I want to read all the emails every day so what I did I created another screen scraper and it would go to a website that the website itself itself was al already a collection of all the daily deals it might have maybe 30 or 40 daily deals a day my script just uh, scrapes the old page puts everything uh, to a MySQL database and I also have some um, keywords listed in my own script and if one of the daily deals uh, is the same as one of my keywords I get an email so I only get email for the things I just configured it for like Raspberry Pi uh, a sort of brand of shoes so this was my um, introduction with scraping and a year later last year I had this customer and they have this website and they wanted to move it to, to Joomla and I looked at the website I couldn't see anything about it I asked could you please give me database access and well it didn't have any database access it was just HTML and of course it's a customer so therefore <coughs> it's not also another question but anyway I was looking uh, to the problem and I created a PHP scraper to put the content in my Joomla in uh, the MySQL structure I will do demonstration uh, at the end um, but before we start with scraping we should ask four questions the first question is what kind of data would you want to scrape is it a whole website what I will dis dem demonstrate or is it just a, a part of a page like a price you want to see uh, the price of, of gold or a ticket a flight ticket or something if you want to go to uh, to this event you want to see the flight ticket of, a, of, a, of the date so you can maybe see if there's uh, is it varies if it, if it gets cheaper or it's more expensive um, you have to consider how many pages do you want to scrape is it just one or is it maybe 100 um, is the content still valid if it's really old I would not bother doing things I would recommend my customers to write new content and what structure does the page have because if the page does not have any structure if there is no pattern in the page structure um, you cannot do it automatically well actually there's a fourth one is it legal no it is not um, so 
uh, in the case of uh, doing your own website, it's legal, of course. But I think if you scrape a lot of websites, uh, you are um, uh, using their copyright. I mean, violating their copyright. But I'm not sure um, in what extent. I'm not a lawyer. So, but you play one on the internet. Sorry, you play one on the internet. Uh, in what you, way? You act like an employer on the internet. I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what about scraping manually? Well, first of all, um, would you like to do it yourself or the other thing? <laughs> if you want to do it yourself, this is really handy tool. However, I think this tool is even better because <laughs> it only has two buttons. Um, but if, if it's just 10 pages, I will do it myself. But if it's more and uh, you want to do it manually, uh, you could let someone else do it. Actually, um, in proper English, you would probably say have someone else do it, but then uh, the, the shortcut uh, didn't sound that good, so I looked like looked at it like this. Um, in this presentation, in this presentation is about scraping, so I don't go into this, but I will go into automated scraping. So, um, automated scraping, when you start doing so, um, the first thing, you need to, to analyze the structure of the pages you want to scrape. And I will show you that uh, with a demo. Um, they, the site you want to scrape should not use an anti-scrape protection, otherwise you have to find techniques to uh, circumvent that. And finally, if you want to scrape a whole site, you need the links to all the pages. So if you have the home page, and the homepage has pages to all the sites, it's no problem. If you have a sitemap, great. Um, if there are pages that are not in the sitemap or in the, in the structure, just some page, yeah, you won't scrape it, you won't find it. But uh, if you look manually, you won't find it either. So I don't think it's a real problem. Uh, the tools. And when I talk about scraping, I always think about this, but this is not a, stool, this is not a scrape, this is a rake. But anyway, um, you can use browser add-ons. Scraper is a really nice tool for Google. And with Scraper, uh, all the links you can click and uh, you, you can you go directly to the page. So Scraper is a tool um, that you can use if you have a, a page with a sort of a, a, a table data. You can select the table data and it will create an SV, uh, SVA, uh, a separated value file for you. CSV, CSV yes. Um, there are other uh, tools that work in combination with a, a software as a service. And uh, yeah, you have, I, I don't have any, um, uh, I, I, I don't like, I, I mean, th those tools are nice, but I use, I do it manually, I will show it later on. So, software as a service, there are a couple of services that are. That are um, nice to use. Most of the services are used to keep track of a website. Like um, you might have a website with clothes and they have categories and you want just to keep track on their prices. And what you could do is uh, use one of those services. Uh, it gives the, an overview of the website and on the website you click what you want to uh, uh, watch. It's a sort of monitoring service. And in this case, it's not really useful for websites to converting them because uh, it's just a monitoring and uh, well, all are paid services. And when you have to do it one time, it's probably better to do it uh, automatically in another way. So there are some tools that you can install on your computer like HTTrack. Um, some other tools, Visual Scrape and Passhub can be useful as well, but they're really limited, the free versions. And uh, if you want to uh, have more, uh, if you want to have unlimited scraping, uh, you should buy uh, one of the commercial versions. So my favorite tool, I'm using Linux, and people who use Mac can do the same. And people who use Windows 10, I think the latest version can do the same as well because they have the command line. And then you can use wget. With wget, you can just get internet pages, or in this case, get the whole website, just on your computer. And 
I will show this in a demonstration. What I do here is really wrong. Because if search engines visit your website, the first thing they do, they look at your robots.txt. Because the robots.txt says these pages you should not index or this is my sitemap or whatever. And if you do wget with robots is off, you ignore the robots file of a site. And if you do so, well, uh, maybe they can see that you're a scraper and they might block you. So um, to do it yourself, the scraping, but in an, in an automatic way, um, what I most of the time do is I start with downloading the whole website using wget. But wget is just getting all the information because if I have all the information on my local computer, I can, can easily uh, see all the files. I can uh, see how many files I have to uh, scrape. I can uh, I have all the, the images of the website on my own computer. So it's easier to use later on when you want to have the images as well in the website. To uh, get all the links to all the pages, you <coughs> need to spider them. And if you spider index.html, you will have all the links and then you use um, you have to use something to scan the files to scan the HTML files only the other files you don't need and finally um, you have to get something uh, to, to, to find um, uh, to only get a part of the information out of the, the page because you don't need the menu in every article or uh, advertising banners you don't need it and um, oh yeah you also need to store it in your Joomla database uh, I always use, uh, if, it, if it's content, I copy the content table of Joomla, I give it a new name and I do the importing stuff in my new table because if, it's, if it goes wrong, you can easily restore it and if it's just okay, you can easily copy it to the contents table. Um, so if you download something, I think this is not really right because I was doing, I was using this so I will show you the, the right way uh, with a demo. Then we'll correct it in my sheets. So to spider stuff, um, PHP has a really nice function and it's called recursive directory iterator and also recursive iterator iterator. And when I, uh, when I first started, I didn't know about this. And then I had a script with about 20 lines of code and all the times it, things broke. And I found about about this uh, function and uh, now I use it and with this function you can find all the hyperlinks all the all the links in your site um, to scan each page you have to uh, well, first of all the spider is get near contents and when I need this I have to trigger it and I do it like here links all I want all the links and I uh, have this, the file stored in, uh, in a, a local folder called imported site. I will get all the links to everything. But because you are using a C URL to scan all the pages, um, you need to uh, use the HTTP because C URL is using HTTP. So here I just create links. So this function creates all the links to all the pages that are stored locally with using uh, the, the local web server. And here I do a CURL uh, function, and the CURL function is like this. With CURL, I don't know exactly what it means. Is it copy URL or something? Or sometimes they say, by the way, curl. I don't know what. What do you call it? Curl. 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 Yes. And what is it? Curl. What is the, 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 the what is the abbreviation? Is it copy URL something? Cut. Cut. Cut URL. I don't know. Oh, cuts. Say, say AT. Like you want to display it. Um, could be. So you have to create an array with all the, the, the functionality uh, you want to give it. Like maybe you want to have a user agent because if your, uh, uh, if your uh, scraper visits the website, um, it will say, hello, I am uh, Internet Explorer 5 or 6 or whatever you want to say to the website and you can just define it here um, and it will just get all the data and the data will be stored in um, an, 
uh, array called data. So this is again, here I get all the links and here I say for each uh, links as link and I do the same as what I just did. And here it's just the curl link I just uh, displayed. But this part, content is scraped between, it's a function I will show you. Because this scrape between is the um, most important part of my uh, code. Because with this scrape between, I define the parts of the content. I would like to have the whole content block. Because if you look at HTML, you see a content block. And in the content block, you most of the time you have an H1 or an H2. So I always, I also want to see the H1 or the H2. Here I just, for the demo, I showed you only H1. And I also want to have the intro text, which is most of the time uh, the start until uh, you see some clear fix in, uh, in the HTML. Uh, the second part. Uh, here you see the function scrape between and it's a combination. I, I found this on the internet. I will list the original uh, uh, author uh, in my description as well. Um, but and you use a couple of combinations to, to find the start and the end. And you just, it's a really nice uh, function because it works so easily. And finally, you have to store things in the database. And in this case, my script is an external PHP. I'm not using the query object of Joomla, but I just create a hard-coded SQL. It doesn't matter for this case. And here I just add some stuff to Joomla's uh, database structure. So this is um, the code that I use. Um, when you want to scrape, you will run into problems uh, or challenges, defines how you, how you define it. Most of the websites, including me, don't want to get scraped. Uh, does any of you mind getting scraped? No? You like to get scraped? No, no, okay. So, uh, there are ways to detect it. First of all, if you have a unusual, unusual high rate uh, of traffic. Spikes. Sorry? Spikes. Spikes, yes. And it, uh, if those spikes occur, from the same IP address. Oh, first you have to slow down when you, when you scan something. And if they are from the uh, same user agent, yes, it sounds suspicious. If it's from different ag uh, agents, it's better. So you could vary the user agents. And I did it in my script. I, I didn't show it, but I will show you in a minute. Um, also, something else which is suspicious, the same IP address for all the requests. So you have to vary that as well. Uh, you could use proxy or a VPN to, to change it. Uh, could you please close the door? Uh, come inside, come inside. Yes, I got you. <laughs> 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 so, um, oh yeah, and something else. If, if you have repetitive tasks, um, it's also when you every day uh, at the same time you uh, come by a website and you scan it, you scrape it, it's also suspicious. So what I did in one of my monitoring stuff, um, I uh, built in a small delay and the delay was random. So on day one, it would maybe five minutes, day two, it would be four and a half, day three, it would be six minutes after uh, my Chrome tab would trigger the, the thing. Um, you could also use honeypots. Use some force, use some force. You know, Pull her. <laughs> um, you could also use honeypots. Uh, does some, does, can any, do you know what a honeypot is? Uh, for the people, I, I see some people uh, with questions in, in, in there in the eyes. <laughs> so honeypots are uh, sort of things that you can use to see if it's a real machine or is it a real human. So for instance, um, did I just, yeah. For instance, if uh, uh, someone, uh, uh, just a visitor, comes to my page, uh, it doesn't. It, it only follows my, my the rules in my uh, uh, URLs that I describe. It doesn't go uh, in, in the back end or I don't know where. If you have a Google uh, 
uh, visit your site, it looks it looks in your robots.txt and it sees, okay, um, we should not uh, search in this or in that or in this page and therefore they they don't do it. But if you have some, some script, or I mean a visitor, who is searching in places that are uh, excluded in the robots.txt, it's suspicious. So that you can use it as a sort of honeypot. But a more interesting honeypot is uh, just create a, a page on your website. The page you should not put into the database. Just make maybe an HTML page or, uh, and it's not in, in Joomla's uh, structure. And if someone finds the page, uh, it's probably a honeypot. But how does a honeypot find it when it's not in the structure of Joomla? Well, you could put it in uh, the structure of Joomla, but with display none. So we as visitors won't see it, but a scraper sees it and it, it doesn't know about display none. I don't know about scrapers that uh, go to the uh, CSS and uh, use it. So they will uh, follow the link. So if an IP gets the link, it's uh, probably a scraper. So we all have websites and before I will do a demo how you could scrape, uh, we don't want to be scraped ourselves. So what could you do uh, to make it more difficult to get it to get scraped? Um, well, I told you about unusual traffic and IP addresses. You should check your log files. Um, use honeypots. And if you find certain IPs uh, that you think are scrapers, you could just block the IP addresses, but it's a bit harsh to do. So you could also use a captcha and a bot can't do a captcha. And if it's just a human, uh, you made a mistake, but they can solve the captcha and go on. Something else you could do. Uh, there are some uh, commercial anti-spam bot services or anti-bot services. Uh, you could also use sort of uh, ops, obfuscate. Obfuscate, obfuscate techniques like Joomla does. Uh, when an email address is displayed on the page. Because Joomla, Joomla has an email cloak plugin that will uh, get rid of the email address and uh, put some JavaScript in, in place. And bots will only see the JavaScript and people click it and it will be used for just normal people. Something else, you could also uh, ferry uh, your page. For instance, if you your content starts with a content tag somewhere, like uh, div uh, ideas content. And why not make something else? Put some uh, something else between the div and the uh, ideas content, like maybe uh, aria or something like, uh, no, 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 that's, that's only for accessibility. But you, you can add stuff to it and then uh, change it. So uh, if bots visit the next day, uh, it's changed and they, can't, they don't know where the content starts. And the people who uh, programmed the bots they have to look again at your page and it takes a lot of time so it's really <coughs> nice to annoy people. Um, so finally I will give you a small demo about um, that we, we will create a website, I mean a scraper website. I will um, switch off the other screen and otherwise I have to do it like this all the time. So, um, okay. So, okay, now I should see the same as the screen as I see on my laptop. Yes. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so the first thing I would like to do is um, I, want to I want to scrape a website. Um, we saw a demonstration uh, uh, of accessibility and our Joomla website of J and Beyond. So I could scrape the Joomla J and Beyond website. And what I have, uh, J and Beyond, I have uh, uh, wget.
So this is my link. I say wget uh, limit rate 200k. So I don't want really big files. I don't need the PDFs or other, other things. Uh, I, want, I would like to have uh, links converted. So um, I use it in a structure later on. Uh, for random weight. So it varies the, the scraping a bit. It's not really in a regular interval. I say robots off, which is not really wise to do, but in this case, yeah, just for the fun. And I say that my browser is Mozilla, but no, I don't say that. I can stop your request. Sorry? I can stop your request. Ah. You can stop my request? Yeah. Can this allow the service? <laughs> Are you what? I can disallow your service. <laughs> Uh, how would you do that? Huh? How, how would you do that? <laughs> Just. Uh, um, um, but I have the same. I have the same IP address as everybody here, so you will shut it up for everyone. I can shut down the server. Sorry. I can shut down the server from JVM. Yeah, but then nobody yeah. can visit it. You won't do that. <laughs> I, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> He's the hawker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is just the site. I'm just scraping it at the moment. Uh, now you can see uh, a lot of program uh, things here are, and all these are pages to the individual uh, speakers and um, the presentations. So that will take some time. So this is the first thing. And when everything is scraped, I uh, will go to, um, I will do it on that now. This is. So I have, only, I have only two files. Uh, one is called, oh yes, um, this one is on GitHub. So it, it's not really the best way of coding. Uh, it's just, if you want to experiment with it, just start with this and uh, create a nice object oriented program from it, because now it's just using some functions. Um, I have a, uh, created a couple of classes. Uh, here you have the CURL, which I demonstrated to you. But here I, uh, I didn't say something like Mozilla or Internet Explorer 5 or whatever. I say uh, a function random user agent. And if I go down here, you can see that I have a list of all, uh, this is an array of random user agents. And I will just nice. select one of them. <coughs> oh. I just uh, select, I count them, how many are there, and I will uh, just select one of them randomly. So every request, if you look in the server logs, you will see I use all different kinds of use agents. Um, you can do the same for a proxy servers, like, like this. I didn't do it here. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so this is the, the CURL function. This is the random use agent. Uh, I already discussed this part. Um, this is the, the part scrape between. So here I use a couple of uh, PHP <coughs> string functions uh, to determine the start and the end, and I will scrape everything between. I get rid of everything outside. Uh, here is so the, the, you're searching on a string. Sorry. You're searching for a string in the HTML. Yes. Yes. Story. Yes. Oh. I will show you. So um, here you have this nice uh, function of uh, PHP. The Recursive directory iterator and the recursive iterator iterator. I really love the sound of those. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, because I uh, want to have nice URLs in my articles, I also uh, use this. And I use this for Joomla. It, this is just uh, taken from the Joomla core. This Joomla uses this to uh, create nice URLs. Ah. So, um, what I did in my script, I have a local host root, uh, some information for the database, and also this is the name of the table where it should be imported. So I go to the database table and I will refresh. Okay, the database table is like this. So uh, at first I go to the content table, there's only one article in it, J Beyond. So I do like operations and I copy it uh, to, uh, what, was, what did I say? Uh, oh yeah, yes, I was. 
uh, so I will re I copy the structure, the structure only, to this name because I will import all the content here. All right, okay, hold on. Already exists. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's already there. Oh, it's empty. So, okay, let's assume I just did it like this. Uh, it's empty. You can see. So this is the first step. The second step is um, I have to look if it's already ready. Yes. So it got 240 files. Uh, well, 0.61 second is a bit weird, but it, it, it got them all. And what I will do now is I will I will just start a scraper. But oh, sorry, Dave, first I will do it like this. Um, so I have the content on my local machine right now. I will browse to it. Um, it's called Chain Beyond, and this is the website which was just live and now it's on live on my own computer, localhost. You can see it over there. <coughs> and let's go to a nice, interesting page. Uh, for instance, in the program, I will go to an uh, interesting presentation. The correct that password was nice this morning. Um, so, the information I want, I don't want. Uh, the banner. I don't want the, the sponsors. I'm sorry sponsors. I, I don't want you in my new website that I want to create. I only want stuff about the speakers, about the, the, this presentation they did. And I don't want to have any links or something like that. So I use uh, Google Chrome. It has a really nice option called inspect. And with inspect you can inspect the whole page. And you can see here I'm already uh, at the H1 tag. And if you look in, uh, if you look here, oh, this is really small. It's not doable. Well, on my normal PC, I have a larger screen, and it's easier to to find where uh, the content starts. Oh yes, this is sponsors. Here's the content. So I will start looking here. I want this and everything uh, underneath it. So in my script, I already put it over there. It says classes content wrapper. It's looking for that. And no, oh, at the end, I see a diff content wrapper. It's the end. Um, so if I sometimes I just edit HTML, I copy it, and I will put it in a new uh, browser. I mean the new window. Oh. So, edit, control A, control C, yes, there it is. So here, this is all the content I want, and everything outside I don't want, but I think I made a mistake because I said component end or content end. Well, it doesn't really matter, diff content wrapper, diff, no, it's probably just outside. Oh yes, yes, here it is. I, uh, this is. I don't want this anymore. So everything in between I should, I want in my database. So the other things are, I would like to have the title. If there is an H1 in the title, I would like to have it. And if there is not an H1, please search for the H2. And here um, I create an alias of the title. I scrape the, for the in intro text. And I do some replacement, so I have all the images links. Because the images links, you have to look at the structure, and you can also do it later on with search and replace in the database. And yeah, here of course I put everything in the database. So well, let's look. Um, so this is that you can see that I just added it. So I go to the website again. So the scrape script is just in this place. It's called scrape.php scrape script.php. And if I start it, now it's running, it's waiting for the local host and it's finished. It's really <coughs> convenient that I uh, gave a merit message like it's finished. But I can show you. If I go to the 
uh, content imported and I do browse, you can see that uh, we have all those uh, titles now here. So I'm not sure if everything is correct in the database, but I got everything in. And I will go to the content table. I will just rename the content table to something else like uh, content old. Oh wait, uh, no, what's, sorry, here, content old. And I will go back uh, to the imported. And I will rename it to uh, your Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. The coffee, I was out of coffee. <laughs> so, uh, rename the table to content. And before I do so, I just go to uh, the backend of my Joomla website. It has this one. And if I do it like this, you get an error because oh, uh, the, the table I just delete, deleted the table, and that's what what uh, yeah what I did because I wanted to rename the other one to content. If I go back to the backend of my site, I have all uh, content here. So this is probably uh, my profile or my uh, my text. Yes. You can see something about uh, my profile and, well, those links, though, they don't work. So I have to find something else for that. And uh, for my convenience, I added the links to the real URLs. So if I am trying to find some solutions for how could I optimize my script, I can go to the URLs and look at the pages that I uh, have problems with. So I can optimize my script and find maybe other tags as a start and end tag to, to scrape your data. So, well, this is basically it. Um, my presentation will be, will be available at uh, slides.dba.nl. Uh, this, this is the, the slides of dba.nl for my presentation and uh, on GitHub. You can go to uh, repositories and it's called Scrape Demo. So I have to get rid of all those buttons. <laughs> it's annoying. A couple of those are, by the way, uh, scraper scripts I was testing, but. Nah, it's too much for them. So uh, this is uh, the scraper script. And what I did, <coughs> because it's really nice. I added um, the sources where I found this kind of script. So uh, this Jacob Ward has a really nice explanation about how he did it. And you can use information on this page as well. Because uh, this script and uh, the, the scraping part with uh, start and end, uh, that I got it from uh, this, this person. Okay. Um, that's this is it. Uh, any questions? <laughs> so, which site are you gonna scrape now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yes. Um, it's um, yeah. Uh, PE7ER PE on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash PE7ER, yes, I can. This, this is too much. Settings. Copy paste it into Yeah, that could be. You just disable a couple. There are really like nice, nice. Uh, um, uh, how do you say? Uh, Add-ons, but uh, sometimes uh, just too much. So, okay, I still have. Uh,
it doesn't work. Okay, you won. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is the URL to uh, to GitHub for the scrape demo. Yes. So oh, how about trying to scrape the website that requires login information? Ah, good question. Um, I think well, in, in this case, I uh, first got everything, and then I uh, scanned it locally because I uh, that, that's my my preference. But if you want to scrape a website that you need a, uh, a login, I think that or in wget or a C URL, you can add a username and password. Yeah, but it works only for HD access. Sorry, HD access? It works only when you have login behind HD access. Ah, okay. Yeah. So a, a website that has login does not work? No, you would need to post data on the login page. Okay, in that case, uh, you should go there as user. Uh, you should um, log in as user and you should create your session ID and uh, use that in some way. I don't know how, but I know it should be possible to use your session ID in your scraper script. So your scraper script is doing like it's you okay. logged in. Okay. Radek? So uh, to answer your question, question C URL, the C stands for C, like seeing. Oh, it's made in C or yeah. seeing? Yeah. Looking. Yeah. And uh, the second thing, I wrote something similar once for a little different reason. And when you are searching from the beginning and the end, I did it with DOM, do DOM document and pass it. Okay. Then it's just an idea for a little bit different approach. Okay. Is it fast? It's a little bit slower, of course. Yeah. But then the, the problem is you, in your code, you knew exactly where it ends because they will comment or something like this. Yeah. But sometimes you don't have idea where it ends and when you pass the document, you can, then you can exactly say where it, where, where it ends. And if you have the, the, the document, the, uh, if, if you, um, the DOM document, if you have this kind of script, is it possible um, to uh, convert the DOM document uh, into JSON or something? Because yeah, you could. Okay, and if it's JSON, it's easier to scrape. Yeah. Okay, thank you for this uh, remark. Other questions? Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.